Are you planning to buy a home in the Northeast Florida area in 2022? Well, if the crazy trends we saw last year taught us anything, it's that you have to go into this market with a plan. In this video, I'm going to share the strategies I'm using to help my clients have more success in this highly competitive housing market. Let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Delancey. I'm a realtor in Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm here to help you upgrade your home and lifestyle. I post weekly videos on living in Northeast Florida, uh, local market trends, home and community tours, and all my best tips for both buyers and sellers. Please remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out. If you've been following the housing market at all over the last year, you've probably heard how competitive it's been. Especially in our area of Northeast Florida, uh, we've seen some crazy trends with aggressive bidding wars and record increases in home prices, uh, which unfortunately has led to a lot of frustrated and fatigued buyers and even agents. For more information on what to expect as we go into 2022, check out my latest market update here. These unprecedented uh, market conditions have definitely been a learning curve for the entire industry. Uh, I found that it's forced me to have even more frank discussions with my clients up front uh, to make sure you have a very clear understanding of what to expect and uh, exactly what you have to do to have any chance of being successful in this market. So today I'm gonna talk about what you can do uh, to be in the best possible position to buy some of the biggest mistakes I'm seeing buyers make and how you can avoid them. Number one, work with an experienced agent who is deeply rooted in the local market. I know what you're thinking, of course, as an agent, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> but I can't stress to you enough how much of a difference who you work with can make. The bottom line is navigating this market takes a higher level of experience, knowledge, and skill. Take the extra time to interview agents and ask the right question. How long have they been a realtor and how many homes have they sold in the last 12 months? Are they a full-time agent or is this just a side hustle? Do they work primarily with buyers or sellers? If you're considering new construction, do they have experience working with the area builders? By the way, if you're thinking about building, that's a whole different animal and you should check out this video for more information on that process. Most importantly when interviewing agents uh, is to ask what tools, resources, and strategies do they use to add value to your home buying experience. Buying a home is one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make and you should be committed uh, to working with an agent who's going to help make the entire process as smooth as possible. One of the biggest mistakes I see buyers make in this area is to jump from random agent to random agent uh, because they're just requesting to see homes online as they find them. Let me tell you, that just ends up being confusing to everyone involved. Uh, it increases your chances of missing out on the right home because your search probably isn't detailed enough and it usually ends up being a huge time waster. Working with one agent who is dedicated to educating you on what's happening in the market and how to prepare for it, and one who can get to know your preferences and what's important to you uh, so they can help you search more efficiently is gonna give you the best possible outcome and overall experience. Number two, get your finances in order before you start your search. Part of this step is to speak with a mortgage lender about your financing options. In this market, it's an absolute must to be pre-approved before you ever step foot inside a home. And that should include submitting all your supporting documents up front, like your pay stubs, tax returns, and bank statements. And it's even better if that lender can go ahead and submit your file up front uh, for underwriting approval. So literally the only thing left for you and your agent to do is find the right home. It's also important to discuss all your financial resources. Do you have enough available for a down payment and your closing costs? 
Do you have any flexibility in your price point and budget? Do you have funds available for any additional costs that may come up uh, for things like appraisal gaps? You and your agent and the lender need to discuss your financial goals and resources so you're all on the same page and you know what all your options are in a competitive offer situation and also your limitations. Do not make the mistake of waiting until you find a home that you like to talk to a lender. First of all, things are moving too fast in this market and you have to be ready to make an offer on a home immediately, uh, sometimes within hours of it going on the market. And if it's a multiple offer situation, you need to know exactly what you have to work with. I've seen too many buyers fall into this trap and they end up missing out on their dream home because we couldn't get a pre-approval fast enough or there ended up being an issue with the financing that they weren't even aware of. Number three, discuss with your agent up front what you're willing to do to get into your next home and also what you may not be willing to do. Here are some questions you should ask yourself about some of the strategies that are sometimes necessary to be competitive in this market. And I'm discussing these points with all of my clients. Are you willing to pay over asking price? And if so, by how much? And if the home doesn't appraise for the agreed upon price, are you willing to come out of pocket for the difference? You should know what your options are in that situation. Are you willing to put down a higher than normal initial binder deposit to show your commitment to the deal? 1% is usually about the minimum I recommend, but nowadays two to 3% of the purchase price is becoming more common. Are you willing to shorten your due diligence and inspection period, or maybe forego inspections altogether? Are you willing to make repairs or improvements at your own expense instead of asking the seller for concessions? Are you willing to pay some of the seller's closing costs to make your offer more attractive? Can you be flexible with your closing date? For example, if the seller is asking for a lease back situation. And if you're coordinating the sale of your current home with a new purchase, do you have a backup plan if there's a delay with either transaction or the two closings don't line up as planned? Now, of course, every situation is different and it can depend a lot on the area and price point you're looking in. But these are all scenarios that you may have to consider and factor into your home buying decision. And the more information and clarity you have from the beginning on how you'll move forward in any given situation, the easier the process will be. One of the biggest mistakes I see buyers making uh, in this category is to think that they can just wing it and make decisions at the last minute. Let me tell you, when you've seen a home you've fallen in love with, emotions come into play. I don't want you to make a rash decision on a whim based solely on your emotions. Having a plan and having clear boundaries up front is the best way to ensure you're making smart decisions that are in line with your values and that you won't end up regretting later. So there you have it guys, some of my best tips to help you be more successful in the 2022 housing market. I'd love to hear what you found to be most helpful. Please feel free to drop a comment or any questions below. And don't forget to subscribe to stay on top of what's happening here in Northeast Florida. I'll see you next time.